Good morning and welcome to worship. Brock and Jennifer, thank you for that beautiful prelude and it's great to see each of you here. It's made my day for you to join us here in the Peachtree Room as we prepare for worship. And this morning, whether you've joined us online or here at the Peachtree Room, you're our honored guest, especially if this is your first time to be a part of the church at Wayuka. We would encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to fill out a guest information card that's in the, the back of the seat in front of you. Also, we would encourage you uh, that uh, you might have the opportunity, whether here in the room or watching through our live stream, to text the word welcome to the number on the screen, and we would look forward to hearing from you, and I would love to drop you a note expressing my appreciation for you joining us for worship. Now, during these days, it's also important that we continue to pray for one another and with one another, and as we do that, please be welcome to share your prayer concerns or any updates on prayer concerns by also texting the number on the screen 404-620-3773 and we'd look forward to praying with you about the major concerns in your life. It is exciting to be together and we're gradually regathering during uh, these days but if you are at home be aware that we'll have uh, communion after the message this morning and if you haven't done so already please gather your communion elements by getting a small cup of juice and either crackers or bread so that you can join us. In fact, we would encourage you to take a picture of the elements that you're participating with at home and post them on our church Facebook page or drop us an email or a text and we'd look forward to celebrating with you as you partake of communion. Now, hopefully if you're here in the Peace Tree Room, you received one of the prepackaged communion elements as, uh, as you came in this morning. If not, be welcome to get one. They're located at the tables in the back entrance and the front entrance and have one ready to participate later. In fact, just a quick word of instruction, if you haven't partaken of the uh, prepackaged elements before, there are two tabs. Uh, when it's time to, to observe communion, pull the top tab first and that will release the bread to partake. And then secondly, when we partake of the cup, pull the second tab and that will open the cup for you. Now let me say just a quick word about new members of our staff. Last week we met uh, uh, Susie uh, Avula, who is our intern for pastoral ministries, began with us this week from Columbia Seminary. Susie, would you stand? And then also Victoria Lawson, who's been our children's intern in the past, will be spending a fall as our intern for student ministries. Victoria, would you stand? Let's give to Susie and Victoria a wonderful why you can welcome. And throughout the years, it's been my practice not to call on friends when they visit, unless they're former staff members. And Amanda and I have dear friends with us this morning, Philip and Shalene Poole. Philip is the retired director of communications from Sanford University. Shalene has been a children's minister in Jacksonville, Florida. She served with me as youth minister in Birmingham. She's been children's minister most recently at the church at Shelby Crossings. They're exploring retirement life. They're about to be grandparents again. And they've stopped by to worship with us in person. Philip and Shalane, welcome. We're glad you're here this morning. And each of you, we're honored that you're here. Let me spend a few moments calling us into the presence of the Lord as we worship together. Come, let us sing praise to our God. Let us uplift the Lord with all our hearts. Let us lift up the Lord with heart, soul, and voice. Let us declare the goodness of the Lord in this assembly and beyond. For great are the works of the Lord. Glorious and majestic are God's deeds. God's righteousness endures forever. Let us recall the wonders of the Lord. For the Lord is gracious and compassionate. Come if you're weary. Come if you are troubled. Come if you are disheartened. Take courage. Come and let us worship our God together. Come, let us worship. It's a new day dawning. 
It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like now.
of little, little things to bring up here today with me for my children's moment. I had to get all set. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so glad you're here today. I invited a special friend to come help me. Caleb, will you come on up here? He, let me introduce Caleb. This is Caleb Gibbs. He has just started pre-first, and we are so excited. He is our one pre-first kid this year, and so we're going to do something a little special with him today. He's going to get a Bible. But I also brought some other books I wanted him to get to see. So let me tell you about some of my other books. You know, he told me this past week he is starting to learn to read. And he even said, Miss Angie, I have started to learn to read the word umbrella. And I was like, whoa, that's a big word. It starts with a U. I was super impressed. But I brought some other books for him to get to see. So, Caleb, I brought my math book. It's a seventh grade math book. I thought you all would really like to hear some hard seventh grade math problems, right? Okay, babe, Caleb, would you, would, do you think that will help you learn about God? Okay, no, I don't think so. Either. All right, I'm going to put that one down. All right, let me, let me try this book, and we'll see if this one will help you learn about God. It's my thesaurus and my dictionary. My favorite teacher in high school gave it to me so I could learn how to write better. Do you think it'll help you learn about God? No. No? Okay, no, it's not going to help us either. All right, let me get to this one. Maybe this will be it. My George Washington book, it tells us about the very first president. Will it help you learn about God? Okay, all right, all right, let me see. I've got some other books because, you know, those books help me about math, and they help me learn how to write and how to spell, and they have some history in them. Oh, let me see about this book because I have one more book in my bag, and it tells me it's a very special book. It's called the Bible. Caleb, do you think this book would help me learn about God? Yes, you're right, it would. Do you think it would tell me stories about what God did? Yes. yes. Do you think it would tell me about what he created? Yes. yes. Do you think it would even tell me that he loves me? Yes. Uh, you're right, it does. It tells me all those things. You know, all those other books down there are how-to books. They tell us how to do math or how to even spell or what had happened. But you know, the Bible is oh, an amazing book. It's a special book. It helps me know some things that I should do. Can you think of any stories that you might know out of the Bible? Did you have one that you could think of? It's the one about Caleb, because it's your name. That's right. I thought you might remember that. Well, you know, there's even a Ten, sto ten Commandments story in the book about the Daniel and the lion's den. There's lots of stories for us to learn to read in here. So anytime you see any books, I hope you think about your special book called the Bible. Because the Bible helps us learn how to act and what to do. I want to read a scripture reference for you. It's from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, and it says, All scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching. Did you hear that, Caleb? It's useful to help us learn. Rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And so we're excited. So Caleb, I present this Bible to you from the church at Wyuka. It's your own Bible for you to be able to start reading and learning about God. We're excited about you learning to read, and we're excited about you learning more about God. But the most important thing for you to learn is to know that Jesus loves you. So, Mr. John, do you think we could sing Jesus Loves Us together? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the morning. The scripture reading for today comes from Numbers 13, 25 to 23. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh 
in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is the fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw, they are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Will you bow with me in prayer, please? Loving God, we come to you this morning still in awe of who you are and the love that you have for us, the grace that you give to us and the mercy that you show towards us. We admire that grace and attempt to pass it along to others. We confess our shortcomings as we are reminded of your wonder. In your presence, we can't help but be reminded of how much you love us. Thank you for daily bread, for the protection that we have experienced and the provision that we have not seen and the courage to know that the way that we do not know is already set before us. For the prayers you have answered and the responses that we are awaiting and the requests that we have yet to make. Most importantly, we thank you for Jesus. Now, God, we pray for the upcoming elections that you will continue to watch over this nation and this world. Remind us of the privilege that we have to shape this land by voting. We pray that people will vote their convictions, that people will seek you in those convictions and ask how is the gospel advanced by that conviction. God, even after we cast our ballots, remind us that we must still do the work, that we must still love those we may not like and pray for those that we may disagree with. Help us to see the least of these, God, not only with our eyes, but with our hearts. For local and other elections, let us not only consider ourselves, God, but our children and our children's children and their children's children's children. God, for the generations of tomorrow are looking, praying, and hoping that we consider them in our decisions today. We pray for the president and his family and all who are navigating the reality of COVID. We rest in knowing that nothing slips by you or catches you by surprise. And we are grateful that our lives and the lives of those we love are in your hand. Finally, God, we ask for your guidance. Open our hearts, our ears, and our eyes as we continue in today's service. We ask for healing for all who need it, patience for all who desire it, and faith for all who lack it. God, we leave this in your hands, and we pray by faith that we will leave here today better than we came, inspired yet again by your word, ready to take on the week ahead. Thank you for guiding us into your presence, God. These we ask in Jesus' name, nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. Amen.
within him complete. Jesus, assign my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat. Jesus, pay. And long before there were songs of the cross, long before Jesus paid it all, there was the story of Joshua and Caleb. It's a good story. It's a story that Susie started for us. And I'll pick up in chapter 14, verses 1 through 10. For the story is as though it were written for today. For in an age of myths and conspiracy theories, in an age of bad reports and concerns about the future, the people of God had a reason to take courage. Beginning in verse 1 of chapter 14, That night, all the people of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this desert. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and our children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Japuna, who were among those who had explored the land They tore their clothes and they said to the entire Israelite assembly, The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord. And do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will swallow them up. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. What a story. It reminds me a little of Fosdick's great hymn that prays, grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days. What does courage look like for the living of these days? How do we embrace, how do we take courage in times like this? Just as Caleb demonstrated courage when facing this sizable challenge, when confronting this bad forecast or negative report, So our faith promises us courage to accomplish our mission individually and as a church family to accomplish our mission even in the face of adversity. The great writer C.S. Lewis said courage is not only one of the virtues 
but the form of every virtue at its testing point. I have seen courage. Boy, have I seen courage. I've seen courage in the eyes of a child who was battling leukemia. I've seen courage in the face of a 55-year-old who went back to school to complete a bachelor's degree and then a master's degree at a time others told her was too late in life. I've seen courage in the grace of a wife who reconciled with her husband after an episode of blatant unfaithfulness. I've seen courage in the life of a young professional couple who let the comforts of middle-class America, they left the comforts of middle-class America behind to follow the call of God to the mission field. I've seen courage in the countenance of a college student who lived her faith in an environment when she was very much a minority, even among other church-going students. I've recently seen courage in the life of a minister of music friend who battled COVID-19 while on a respirator, writing final notes to his wife and children, not sure if he would survive. I've seen courage all across this community, especially among school teachers and other frontline workers who go to work every day facing risks that we know not of and mounting monumental challenges. How do we take courage? Let me suggest three things this morning as we prepare to take the elements of the Last Supper. First, muster your courage, especially when you're the one who gets a bad report. You see, life can be flowing along smoothly and then unexpectedly you get bad news, you get a bad word, you get a bad report, life throws you a curveball. It could be a pink slip, it could be a concerning diagnosis, it could be a family problem, it could be your own personal moral dilemma. Tom White says the badge of courage does not require that we walk through something that's extraordinarily dangerous. It simply requires that we share God's love whenever and wherever we are, especially in the face of bad news. You see, when you face a challenge, it's no time to go back to Egypt. I've heard more than one pastor speak about the back to Egypt syndrome, the moment the going gets tough when you're venturing through the wilderness of life, and all of a sudden you want to go back to where you used to be, forgetting how challenging yesterday was. But I tried to give a little thought, what are the real symptoms of the back to Egypt syndrome? What are the symptoms of stopping on the way to the promised land and changing directions? What causes us to want to go back to the hard labor of days in Egypt, just like in this narrative of Caleb? I want to suggest three symptoms. First of all, we sort of began to fear the uncertainty of the future more than the hardship of the past. Or second, we miss the comfort of yesterday's routine, but we forget the discomfort of yesterday's challenges. Or third, we long for the promised land, and that longing is real. We're just not sure that we have the energy and the fortitude to endure the wilderness that's between here and there. Well, I agree with Dorothy Bernard who said, courage, courage is simply fear that has said its prayers. Not one of us is courageous by default. But every one of us can be courageous by choice. Muster your courage whenever you get a bad report. Speak with courage, especially when you are in the minority. Speak with courage. It's easier to be courageous 
when you're among the majority, when you're among friends, when everybody thinks like you. But it's extremely difficult to be courageous when you're the minority voice, when you're going against the grain of popular thinking. But Jesus challenges us not only to stand up for what is right, not what is popular, but in all seasons to do what is right, not what is most expedient or convenient. By the way, when you read the gospel story, written years after Caleb's story, we learn that Jesus spent most of his time on earth without concern about the majority opinion. And most of his life stood against the grain of the popular thinking of his day. Andrew Jackson once said, in the face of a monumental battle, one man with courage makes a majority. And one man or one woman with faith and courage is a force to be reckoned with. Third, and finally, act with courage whenever you face a sizable challenge. Courage is not an emotion that expels fear, but a spirit of determination that overrides our fear. Throughout life, expect that you and I will experience an assortment of fears and phobias. Some are rattled by the fear of failure. Others are more concerned with the fear of the unknown. Some were born with a fear of the dark. Others of us go through life with a fear of death. And some get to a point in life where our primary fear is the fear of being alone. Someone once wisely quipped, following the path of least resistance is what makes rivers and men crooked. It's the obstacles that stretch us toward maturity. It's the challenges and sometimes the bad reports of life that literally bring out the best in us. You see, our faith, no matter how strong, doesn't exempt any of us from the bad stuff in life. Rather, our faith equips us to deal with the bad stuff proactively and courageously. As a child growing up, I had three favorite cartoons. Casper the Friendly Ghost, Batman and Robin long before there was a literal show about the Cape Crusader. And then Popeye the Sailor Man, who could take a jar of spinach, which I hated until I saw him literally squeeze the can as it popped in the air and he caught it mouth wide open, gave him courage and strength like he had never known before. I wish, I wish I could tell you that in your moment of weakness and my moment of vulnerability, we could pop open the bread or screw off the top of the juice and take the elements of communion and instantaneously we become super Christian. There's probably very little strength to be drawn from bread and juice. But oh, the courage and the strength that comes from the story behind it. You see, when you ask what does courage look like, we all know we need it. Whenever we face a sizable challenge, our faith generates courage, enabling us to accomplish our mission even in the face of adversity. So maybe this week, like Noah, we need to build something before it starts raining. Or like Moses, we need to speak up and confront the pharaohs in our life. 
Or like David, we need to stand toe-to-toe and eye-to-eye with our Goliath. Or like Elijah, we need the courage to know that we're not the only one who cares. And that we dare to step out from under the juniper bush of our own life of despair and depression. Or like Esther, we become convinced that God has brought us here for a time such as this. Or like Jesus, we would say, not my will, but your will be done. You know, as followers of Jesus, we believe that we gain courage from our relationship with God. And if you're here this morning or tuned in via our live stream, and you're ready to begin that journey of following Jesus, we would love to be among your primary encouragers. And we want to be one of your conversation partners. If you would speak to one of our ministers following today's service, or call the number on the screen at 404-814-4460 and leave a message, one of our ministers will call you. And we would love to have a conversation with you about how faith comes to life. Now, as we prepare to take courage and take the elements of this table, would you join me in a prayer together? May we pray. God of grace and God of glory, we do pray indeed that you would grant us wisdom and grant us courage for the living of these days, whatever these days may bring. Fortify us with your grace. Instill us with your courage, for we pray in Jesus' name, amen. In a moment, as we share in communion, we invite everyone here and everyone who has joined us via live stream, no matter what your faith tradition or background, if you name the name of Jesus and your faith and conscience do not permit you from partaking, we invite you to join with our family to partake these elements And to remember that the Lord's Supper is an act of remembrance and resolve. It's a covenant of reconciliation and realignment. Recollecting what Christ has done for us and realigning our lives with what Jesus wants to do in our lives today. If you would hold and prepare your prepackaged elements of communion, and follow along with us. Prior to his death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. And once they had gathered there, he took the bread. And when he broke it, he said to his disciples, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you take the bread and join with me as we partake together? Afterward, he took the cup and when he blessed it, he said to his disciples, this is the new covenant of my blood shed for you. This cup represents the newness of life that we have in Christ, the fruit of the vine, the forgiveness of our sins. Would you take your cup and as you do, let us drink this cup in remembrance of Jesus himself. The scripture says that after the disciples shared that last supper, they sang a hymn. John Duncan will come and lead us in singing our own words of commitment.
my sin, my cross, my shame. Rising again, I bless your name. You're my all in all. When I fall down, In just a few moments, John is going to come and lead us in singing our closing song. But before he does that, let me take just a moment to say thank you for coming and joining us here in this room for worship today. We're so glad that you came or if you uh, participated in our worship online, uh, we're glad that you came. And particularly if this was your first time to join us, we are so glad that you have uh, joined us today. We hope that you'll participate with us again next Sunday. It's good to have you. Next Sunday is going to be a very special day here at uh, Wyuka. Every Sunday is special at Wyuka, but particularly next Sunday uh, because we'll be having Faith and Blue Sunday uh, here at Wyuka. Our special guest speakers for this service include former Braves player Otis Nixon and Pastor Sawyer from the Rise Again congregation. This special time of worship is just one of the many events that are being held across our nation to help to reinforce the connections between the law enforcement professionals and the communities that they serve. So we hope that you'll join us in worship then. I need to also remind you that next Sunday, the uh, Peachtree Road entrance into this side parking lot over here will be closed again for maintenance, so you can still get into that parking lot. You just need to go through the maze off of Peachtree Dunwoody Road. Just get, go through the 3630 complex, and you can make your way there, or you can use any of the other entrances. They'll be open as usual. Did you know that uh, Wednesday Night Live for preschoolers through fifth grade is still happening every week? It's done on Zoom, and uh, we hope that our kids will be participating with us. We don't want them to miss the Bible study, the friends, the music, and all the fun that they'll be experiencing each week. The preschoolers meet from 6 o'clock until 6.20 each week, and then the kids who are in uh, the the fifth, uh, fifth grade, uh, kindergarten through fifth grade will meet from 6.30 until 7 o'clock. So it's uh, a little bit staggered schedule so that we can get specifically uh, with the kids uh, at that time. So uh, look forward to uh, participating in that. We hope that you'll email Angie to sign up each week for that Zoom event. We want to thank you for your tithes and offerings, for your faithful support here at Wyuka. Uh, you continue to amaze us all at your faithfulness to serve God through your tithes and offerings. So this morning, uh, you can uh, give as you leave. There's a basket on the table out front or here up the uh, front. And... Um, you can use give that way, or you can give uh, by texting the word give to the number that you see on the screen right now. Uh, you can give online at wayuka.org, uh, or you can use your own bank's bill pay system. Any of those will work in addition to mailing a contribution into the church. So you have your choice there. Now would you stand with us as we John comes to lead us in our closing song. You know, and before we start, I want to say a special word of appreciation. Uh, week after week, I've been blessed by these musicians that come and help us to have the kind of worship that we have. I'm so grateful to have Jen with us and Mike Cohen 
and Amanda and Brock and to be able to sing a duet with my friend Eddie was such a blessing. I just want to say thank you to these folks. And Zach, I almost left you out, Zach. Thank you for the great work that you all do week after week, give another time to the Lord. Now, in recent days, we've learned uh, a new song, all right? And uh, since I can't tell whether you're singing or not, except from the sound I hear, uh, I'm going to be looking at your eyes. But we're going to sing for the cause. We're going to sing the full song, so you can wait three more minutes. It's okay. But we're going to sing with all of our hearts that which we have a cause for, to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's sing it. Let's sing together now. For the cause of Christ the King, we live our lives an offering till all the earth resounds with ceaseless praise to the Son. Christ we proclaim, Christ we proclaim, the name above every Every sin was laid on the sun. To the king who conquered death, to free the poor and the oppressed, for lasting peace, for life and liberty in the sun. towards us that while we were yet sinners Christ died for the ungodly and today we proclaim him as we leave we tell the story Thank you. 